Now let's see five essential characteristics of the cloud. So the first is the on-demand self-service. So as the name suggests, the cloud service should be on-demand and should be self-services. What is the meaning of on-demand? On-demand means if we are looking for let's say Amazon Web Services, so that service would be available to me whenever I require. That is called on-demand. So that service should be available to me whenever it is, whenever I require it. So depend upon my requirement, that service should be available. That is called on-demand. Second is self-service. Self-service means I need to go to their site. I need to sign in there. And then I'll use the computing resources based on my requirement. Right? So it is not like I am sending the mail to AWS that these are my requirements and me the link by configuring my uh, computing resource. So it will be not like that. That is, you just have to go to the site, sign in there, just choose whatever computing resource you require, and that's all. Your computing resources is done. That is self service, on demand self service. Second is broad network access. If you are the cloud service provider, so you should have very good network service, very good internet bandwidth. If you doesn't have internet bandwidth of that much of quality, so definitely you might be decreased and degrading the revenue. You people will not join your cloud. Why? Because to joining your cloud, it is taking a lot of time. Why? Because of the less bandwidth. So every cloud service providers will have a good amount of bandwidth, a good broad network access will be available into the cloud infrastructure. This is the second essential characteristics of cloud computing. Next is resource pooling. What do you mean by resource pooling? So uh, let's say I'll take an example of resource pooling as I am coming uh, uh, to the institute with my car and let's say uh, with me uh, two or three faculty also join we are going to the same way so they have also joined so that concept is called car pooling right you know the concept of car pooling so what happened in the car pooling why the concept is very um, uh, famous because if you are going to the same direction why to use different different resources to get into that particular so we'll use the same resource, we'll share the resource because it is available, we'll share the resource and uh, we'll reach our, or our fulfill our requirement. In the same way, resource pooling also will be done. In the resource pooling, what will happen is you have the resource and that resource will be pooled or resource will be shared among different customers. So let's say uh, I will take an example of Google Drive. You all using Google Drive, right? So once you create the Gmail uh, Gmail account, the Google Drive will be given by the Google. They will say that with the mail and the Google Drive, you can store 15 GB of storage. So you can avail 15 GB of storage. Do you think that the Google have 15 GB of hard drive? No, not at all. They have the hard drive of let's say 10, 100 terabyte of hard drive. And that hard drive will be divided into chunk of memory of 15 GB. And that one hard drive will accommodate thousand of customers. Getting it? So we have only one hard drive means we have only one resource. That resource will be pooled by thousand of customers, Google customers. Getting it? That is That concept is called resource pooling. So that resource, which I am telling you, the storage resource will be pooled, will be shared among different customers. That is also useful uh, when we talk about uh, any, any computing resource. Let's talk about the processor. Uh, so do you think that the, the, the Google have uh, Intel dual core processor with their server? They have at least Xeon processor with 16, 16 core, 
or beyond that 32 core or 64 cores uh, processor these powerful processor can be dedicate to one customer no it has been shared the core will be shared among different customers so whoever is requiring those uh, uh, let's say i require four core so from the 32 core of one processor they will give allot me three cores four cores in the same way let's say you require two cores so they will allot from the same processor they will allot two core to you let's say somebody required only one core so they will they will give only one core from that particular cpu having the 64 or 32 cores and they will allot one to you so in that that is called resource pooling next is called rapid elasticity or expansion that is a very good essential characteristics of cloud computing rapid elasticity the meaning of elasticity is uh, the resource allotted to a customer could be increased or could be decreased depend upon their requirement let's assume that i have hosted my website into amazon web services so that amazon web services will give me elasticity so that elasticity i can use whenever there is a demand of my site and there is a hit on my site let's say i have configured the system or aws uh, uh, system for hosting my website for let's say 50 users at a time that can accommodate and suddenly i got the the traffic of let's say 1000 or 2000 or 5000 uh, hits or 5000 um, requests so the amazon web services should be able to allocate more memory more processor at that particular time when it requires that is called rapid elasticity or expansion capacity got it so rapid means as soon as possible the resources could be allocated or could be deallocated depend upon the requirement the last one is the measured services so measured service is another characteristics of the cloud computing in measured services what we what we measure is we measure the service how much service you have taken from me based on that i'll create the or i generate the bill so as you all know that they are not doing charity right they are doing business so google also if your uh, storage go beyond 15 gb they will give you a message to increase the memory and then for that you have to pay getting it so they will give you some free space for storing your data but you are if you are going beyond that you have to pay for that in the same way many firms many companies even the government organizations they will use the cloud services and they have to pay to use those cloud services cloud services is nothing but computing resource services so if you need some more servers to add for for your company so you have to pay for it so definitely for that there should be some measurement component which will uh, give uh, the which which is which is used to generate the bill for the customer depend upon the usage of the resources it's just like your electricity bill how your electricity bill generates electricity bill generates depend upon how much uh, electricity you use or how much unit of electricity how much watt of electricity you have used during the the time of 30 days so based on that they will generate the bill in the same way your cloud computing infrastructure should also have the the method by which you can calculate how much services has been taken by a customer and based on their services the cloud computing infrastructure should able to generate the bill getting it should able to generate the bill that is called measured service.